Hi, I'm Dr. James Markham, and welcome to Heart of Health. Every week, we collect your questions that are sent to our website, heartwiseministries.org. And when we have quite a few questions on any given field, then, then I look at my book and say, we need a specialist to answer your questions. Lately, I've been getting a lot of questions about achy arms, achy shoulders, achy backs. The specialist that deals with this is physical therapists. So we've asked Russell Atkins to come and join us today. And you come very highly recommended by my own mother-in-law, who says you are the best physical therapist that ever was. Russell, thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. That's, that's high praise indeed. From the I know. And, and tell me, tell me, um, did you, physical therapist, do you have to go to school for this or you just sort of pick this up on your own? No, it, it, is a, it is a graduate program, uh, although I've been in practice for over 20-some years now. I graduated with a bachelor degree, uh -huh. uh, and back when I graduated, a bachelor degree was the entry-level degree. Um, I kind of got, uh, <coughs> I really say it's divine intervention how I, I got into the field, because I started in the nursing program, mm -hmm. and it took me about 10 days to realize that wasn't going to be for me. So um, my parent, my mom had seen an article in the paper about predicted job availability for the next 20 some years and physical therapist was number three on the list. And coming out of high school, I knew I wanted to do something in healthcare, but I, I wasn't quite focused enough that um, to know what physical therapy was or what we did. So I, I changed my major with, without having any idea of what a physical therapist was. And I uh, got some good mentoring uh, at a, um, with a physical therapist down at Erlanger uh, Hospital here in Tennessee. And got accepted to the program at Loma Linda University in the, in the mid '80s, and the rest is history, as they say. And now, how many years have you been in private practice? Well, I've been in private practice for almost 10 years. My first 10 years of practice was in San Diego. I was in sports medicine out there. Mm -hmm. I worked very closely with the San Diego Padres baseball team. Okay. Uh, so I saw more than my fill of shoulders and elbows uh, in those 10 years with dealing with pitchers and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, then I moved back home uh, in June of 2000 and started my own practice about a year later. Okay, so so you're very well qualified to talk about physical therapists. Well, I'm, I'm well qualified to talk about orthopedic sports medicine physical therapy. Okay. There are many other um, avenues and disciplines and subspecialties in physical therapy that I'm less qualified to talk about. Well, we'll see if we can tackle some of these questions that have come into our website right after this short break. And after we get back from a break, we're going to talk to someone who had hip replacement therapy and had a question regarding the need for physical therapy. We're going to be right back after this short break. I'm Dr. James Markham, and I talk to patients every day who want to know the truth in healthcare. On our website, heartwiseministries.org, you can have your questions answered. You can read my blog where I talk about interesting and controversial subjects in medicine. You might choose to go to the radio or television sections and learn more about all sorts of health topics. Take the time and go to heartwiseministries.org. place for modern medicine, but that's not enough. There's a place for lifestyle, but that's not enough. The real truth in medicine, the real truth in healing comes from that relationship with the Heavenly Father. That relationship can show us the balance. When to use modern medicine, when to use lifestyle, and to use it for the right reasons. Well, this book gives the solution to the healthcare dilemma. It answers the question, why am I sick? How do I get better? And how can I have ultimate healing? Welcome back to Heart of Health. Today we're talking about and answering your questions regarding physical therapy. And our first question comes from a person that's had undergone hip replacement surgery. 
and their doctor did not send me to a physical therapist after. I don't know the reason behind that. But then the patient says, I went to see one on my own, and how do I know this person, if a physical therapist is doing a good job, and they say, my joints still hurt, however, my mobility is improving. So I guess what we want to talk about here is, is the need for physical therapy, and how do we judge whether a physical therapist is delivering? Okay, well, I, first of all, this is a great question because it addresses some of the points that uh, I, I'd wanted to make on this show. Um, when orthopedic physical therapy does really only four things, and if we do them correctly, we do them, I, I believe, better than any discipline in healthcare. The first thing we do is we stretch. Mm -hmm. We take joint capsule, connective tissue, uh, ligament, muscle, anything that's tight, if it's tighter than it should be, a good physical therapist will stretch it and will teach the patient how to stretch it themselves. So tight's not good? Tight is not necessarily good. Okay. Uh, the second thing we do is we strengthen. So if we have a, a muscle or a system of muscles that are weaker than they should be, we're going to strengthen them in the clinic and we're going to show the patient how to strengthen them at home. Third thing we do is, is called functional re-education or, or functional retraining. So we take the stretch structures and the strengthen structures and we educate the patient on how to use those systems in a more functional manner. For example, throwing a baseball or reaching into a cabinet to get a, a plate out or human walking. Uh, mm -hmm. I do a lot of gait training in my, uh, in my office. The fourth thing we do is we educate our patients. So I teach my patients how to maintain their improved system so that they don't have to keep coming back to see me. Okay, from day one, from the first time I see a patient, okay. I'm planning on discharging them on their own to get them independent so they don't have to continue coming in to see me on a routine basis. So with regard specifically to this question, um, the, the interesting part of the question is that the woman says she still has pain, but she's moving better. Right. Okay. If you'll note, I didn't, I didn't say the physical therapy has anything that will directly affect a patient's pain. Okay. All we do is we stretch, strengthen, function, re-educate, and educate. So they might still have pain, even with successful physical therapy. That's correct. And oftentimes, uh, a patient's pain is not related to a mechanical dysfunction. They may have any number of other situations that are causing them pain, where if I've stretched, strengthened, and functionally retrained them and educated them, my job's finished, they may still hurt. However, if their pain is related to some mechanical dysfunction, like a muscle system's too weak or a capsule's mm -hmm. too tight, then we improve that, lo and behold, symptoms often get better. Now, I've never had a patient come into my office and say, Russell, my, my, my shoulder girdle is unstable and my posterior capsule's too tight and my rotator cuff is too weak. They come in and say, my shoulder hurts. And it's my job to, to figure out what their dysfunction is what their abnormal movement pattern in ver is versus the normal movement pattern in is correct what needs to be corrected and send them on their way. So you can figure out that when someone comes in with shoulder pain by how do you figure that out? Well, uh, I do a very detailed examination uh, of and based on my knowledge of what normal joint motion and normal joint feel is, I can identify abnormal and then we can work to address whatever problems they have. Uh, it, it keeps my job from being boring. Right. If patients came into me and told me every dysfunction they had, I get bored pretty quickly. Yeah. Now, another part of this question is: is does every person that has surgery do they benefit from physical therapy, or some people don't necessarily need it on, some, a, some on do, a joint? Some do not need the physical therapy after a joint surgery. Um, who it, might who it, might need a sur who might need extra physical therapy after a joint surgery? Well, I'm a little surprised that, that a total hip didn't get referred to physical therapy. Mm -hmm. uh, they uh, that's a very invasive surgery and often often needs some some intervention, in my opinion, from a physical therapist. Okay. But not everyone does. Okay. Some sometimes you have a 35 year old who who has right. to have a total hip done for from a fracture or for whatever reason and. Those, those patients will often be their own physical therapists. They often motivate themselves. And how, how, does, how does this person know if the physical therapist is doing a good job? How, how, you know, how can your patients know if, if, you're, if you're delivering? I guess you already answered that. They're not going to be coming back to you. Well, yes. Uh, if you see results, right. uh, results-based practice uh, is, is probably a great indication whether the, the, they're doing an adequate job. 
Uh, I don't I don't use any of the thermal or electrical modalities that are um, so common to my profession in, in my clinic. Uh, I don't use ultrasound, electrical muscle stimulation, laser, you know, any of the bells and whistles that, that I call them um, to treat people. I, I, I know patients, I, I, I routinely get patients who've been to other physical therapy clinics mm -hmm. and they said that they were in therapy for an hour and a half and the, pa and the therapist never touched them, never laid a hand on them. Uh, I think there's a lot of information that can be gleaned from the human touch and from feeling how a joint moves in addition to watching how a joint moves. Um, so if your physical therapist is not laying his, his or her hands on you, uh, I, think that's, I think that's a strike. Yeah. Well, the healing touch is very important. Um, we're going to go to a short break now, but we're going to come back and talk about the different medical situations that a patient might be referred to, the different treatments that physical therapists accomplish on patients. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you for watching Heart of Health. You can easily spend $90 on an expensive meal out. How about investing $89.94 in your future? Just think about the possibility of coming off those prescription pills and getting rid of all the side effects. Think about feeling better than you have ever felt in your life. This is all possible for you. For only $89.94, you will receive a seven-part DVD series, Weight Management by the Book, a 30-lesson workbook with over 100 recipes, and if ordered today, exercise tubes will be included for free to help with your journey. There are many programs available, but this unique program has identified the truth about how to manage weight. This program is not available in stores. This limited offer will not last long. Pick up the phone now and dial 877-504-9628. Operators are standing by. This call will change your life forever. Welcome back to Heart of Health. I think the last point that um, Russell Atkins made about touching people is so important in the world we live in. You know, the, the human touch has dramatic ability to heal, and we don't need gadgets all the time to accomplish the same thing. I don't know why people just don't like to touch you. I'm sure you wash your hands after every patient, right? Yes, uh, several times a day, <laughs> 15, 20. So your hands are clean. <clears throat> and dry. Um, and dry. The next question we have is, is what type of medical problems do physical therapists treat? Or, or I guess this person's asking is, when, what type of patients need physical therapy? What type of referrals are, are coming your way? That, that's a very broad question. Um, uh, I, see, I see a lot of patients with lumbar spine pain, you know, low back okay, pain. Okay, low back pain. Uh, no, I see neck and shoulder, a lot of neck and shoulder issues. Um, there's a condition called frozen shoulder, which okay. is a very common uh, condition and <clears throat> a very mysterious one too. Uh, in fact, frozen shoulders are probably the most difficult uh, patient group that I see. Uh, post-surgical, orthopedic post-surgical patients, um, uh, the list is endless, okay. really. Um, how about people that um, have problems walking? Do they benefit from physical therapy? Sure. And in fact, I think that, and here again, this is a personal opinion, that if, if, if an orthopedic physical therapist should be an expert in anything, it should be, we should be experts in human gait. Uh, there was a study that came out probably two years ago that compared different healthcare practitioners' knowledge of the neuromusculoskeletal system. And at the top of that list was orthopedic surgeons. They had the best understanding of the uh, orthopedic muscle skeletal neural system. Number two on that list was physical therapists. Right. So we have a unique understanding of those systems, uh, and, and especially as they relate to human gait and human ambulation. Uh, there's, my low back pain patients have a characteristic gait. 99 out of 100 of them have a characteristic gait where they've eliminated one, one particular motion from their gait, and whether it's a chicken and egg problem, mm -hmm. whether, whether they've eliminated the motion and that predisposed their backs to hurt, or they, their backs is bothering them and that they eliminated that motion, you often can't tell. But in order to restore normal mechanics to the lumbar spine, we've got to get that motion back into their gait. So I do lots and lots of gait training. Now, what do you think it is about our society that makes walking so difficult? You know, why, why aren't we walking correctly? Is it the shoes we're wearing? Is it the, the way we're sitting in chairs all day long? I mean... Uh, you know. it, it could be, it could be both, both okay. of those reasons. It, it could be... Uh, it could be the fact that we, uh, many times, we spend much of our day sitting. 
Yeah. Uh, that we don't walk like we used to. Right. Uh, we certainly don't walk like Europeans do. I mean, Europeans, we spend a lot of time in the car. Yeah, yeah. Now, this is one I've, I've sort of always been curious about exercise programs. You know, I see a lot of people going and they're lifting heavy weights and doing this. You know, are, should they be looked at to make sure they're doing this correctly? You know, I see all sorts of people that lifting weights or pulling muscles or straining things or spending too much time, these triathlons and straining things. Would they benefit from, from a, a deeper knowledge of this? Or do you think exercise physiologists should, should have some physical therapy background and training? Or should just people just jump into these exercise programs? I see some people just really overdo it. Oh, certainly they do. Or, or they do it incorrectly, and then they end up as patients. Um, I think uh, an intervention or two, I mean, they certainly shouldn't need to be seen long-term.